Hello and welcome to Giddy Knits episode number 10. Today is Wednesday the 14th of June and as usual I'm Helen and I'm coming to you from Surrey in the United Kingdom where I live with my husband Tom and my two boys, Arthur who is three and a half and Jasper who is seven months old. Episode 10 feels like a bit of a milestone, we're in double figures. Um, it feels good, I, yeah, episode 10, it sounds good. <laughs> Um, anyway, so welcome back to um, anyone who has watched me before and watches me regularly. It's lovely that you come back week after week. And hello to any um, anybody that's watching me from. Hello to anybody who's watching me for the first time, and hello to anyone uh, any any new subscribers as well. Um, thank you for subscribing to my channel, and I'm glad you're enjoying um, what I'm putting out there. Um, okay, so I have said already that I am Helen. <laughs> um, you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Giddy Helen and we have got a Ravelry group for the podcast as well which is um, Giddy Knits Podcast um, and you can find that on Ravelry by um, searching in the um, in the groups tab um, there's a search bar if you put in Giddy Knits Podcast you'll find us. Um, okay so hopefully this week will be a little bit calmer and a little bit more a little bit more erratic, no hopefully a little bit less erratic. Arthur is back at nursery, thank goodness, um, and Jasper, fingers crossed, is fast asleep. Um, we went swimming this morning, as we tend to do on a Wednesday morning, he has a swimming lesson, um, and he's always really tired afterwards, which is why I tend to record on a Wednesday lunchtime. Um, anyway, so he's asleep and hopefully he'll stay asleep while I record. Um, yeah, so hopefully it'll be slightly less chaotic. Although it did seem like people seem to enjoy Arthur's little foray into the podcasting world. <laughs> You'd be amazed at how much I had to edit out. <laughs> okay, so um, I wanted to start off with just a little bit of admin stuff. Um, the Summer Stripe Along is currently running. Um, it started on the 1st of June and it's running until the 31st of August. Um, I've talked about it in detail for the last few weeks, so I won't go into details today. Um, but if you're interested, it is a um, craft along involving stripes, which will be running throughout the summer. Um, we've got a Ravelry group, and all the information for the craft along can be found in the Ravelry group. Um, and the Ravelry group is um, Summer Stripe Along CAL, which, as usual, I'll put on the screen. Um, was there anything else I wanted to say about that? So the group... Oh, yes. Um, We've got loads of prizes that have come in. Um, all the information for the prizes and all the rules for the um, all the rules for the craft along can be found in the Ravelry group. So head on over there and um, check it out. There's lots of exciting stuff coming in. We also have um, a new podcast joining us um, to help host um, the craft along as well, and that is um, Destined to Knit. Um, and they're an audio podcast. Um, I will link them below in the show notes, which I always forget to say. The show notes can be found down below in the drop down bar. Um, and so, yeah, um, new podcast joining us, and that is Destined to Knit. And they are Marcy and Kim. Sorry, my notes are just here, and I just want to make sure I get it right. Um, and yep, yeah, I'll link them down below. And then, of course, there's still um, Emily of Anders Mill Knits. Amy of um, Hudson Valley Knits and Karen from Simply Stashless. Again, they'll all be linked down below, but by all means, go out and check out their podcasts. Um, it's always lovely to find a new podcast that you enjoy. Okay, so that's all I was going to say about that this week. If you want any more information, then as I said, head on over to the Summer Stripe Along group. Um, I've got a chatter thread set up in the Giddy Knits podcast group as well, um, where all the information can be found. Um, but yeah, there's lots of chatter happening over at the Summer Stripe Along group, so come along and join in. Um, so, let's get into the main part of the podcast. <laughs> um, so this week I have got for you um, a finished object, some works in progress, some new cast-ons, um, a little bit of yarny goodness, and then, as usual, I will finish up with my little behind-the-scenes section where I talk about what we've been up to. Um, today, it's really, really warm, so if I start to look hot <laughs> um, hot and a bit flustered, then it's the weather. 
Um, it, in my flat, it's currently about 27 degrees centigrade, which I know for a lot of places is not very hot, but in the UK, that's roasting. And I have shut the windows um, to try and block out some of the, um, the traffic noise. Um, so it's going to get quite warm in here. <laughs> um, but it is beautiful and it is sunny and I shouldn't be complaining. But to be honest, I'm not a sun person. I much prefer the winter. I much prefer the cooler weather. Um, I never know what to wear when it's hot and yeah, I just get too hot and I could moan and whinge about it for ages. But I will shot. I will just try and enjoy the sunshine. Um, okay, so let's go straight in to my finished object for the week. And this was only just a finished object. It's literally been taken off of um, blocking this morning. But I finished the little flax light that I was knitting um, for my friend's little baby. Um, and here it is. Um, I have actually blocked this. I didn't block the one I made for Jasper because I made it out of an acrylic and nylon blend. So it didn't really seem much point. Um, but this is a wool nylon blend, um, so I did block it, and I'm so glad I have because it has evened out a lot of the issues. Um, and I know you've all seen this pattern before because I knit one for Jasper. Um, but yeah, as I said, this is the Flax Light um, sweater by Tin Can Knits, um, which is a very simple top-down um, raglan um, jumper knit in the round um, with these lovely um, garter detailing down the sleeves um, and this yarn is yarn I dyed myself um, it is a drops fable base um, so it's a 75% 75% virgin wool 25% um, polyamide I think I should have had the labels here somewhere but I don't know anyway um, and it was just their undyed colour, which I think is colour 100. And then I've dyed it into a variegated green. Don't know how well the colours are coming up. Green always seems to struggle a little bit. But yeah, a variegated green. And I did alternate skeins um, throughout the body. And I'm glad I did, because it's created this sort of striping effect rather than what would have been very, very much pooling. And um, you can see the back is slightly different. It looks like it's pooling on the back here but it is actually striped, it's just striped um, in the darker colours. I didn't alternate the skeins on the sleeve because obviously it's narrower um, and it still had the same kind of striping effect on the sleeve, but I'm overall I'm very very happy with this. I think um, the recipient will like it. Um, I've knit this in the 6 to 12 month size because um, um, baby Sam was born 2nd of May I think? Anyway, the beginning of May, baby Sam was born. Um, so obviously a wool jumper over the summer is a bit pointless. Um, but this should fit him come sort of October, November time when it will be getting cold, um, which is perfect. Um, I have, I have um, ends peeking out the bottom there. I have weaved all my ends in, but um, I haven't quite trimmed them off after blocking yet. Um, but yeah, so that is my finished object and that is my lovely little flax light for Sam um, and I'm really happy with it and hopefully I should be seeing them on um, Friday at the, the toddler group that we go to um, and I can give that to her then <laughs> um, so that is my only finished objects this week I was hoping to have a little bit more finished and as I said I only finished this last week I only, sorry I only finished this yesterday um, got it blocking overnight but um, that's fine I've got a couple of other things that are close to finishing so we will move on in that case <laughs> to um, works in progress um, I have one work in progress for you this week um, and that is my Union Square socks I was hoping to have these finished these are one of the things that really should have been finished because I am so close to finishing them but I just didn't get time. Um, we were on holiday last week um, and I was hoping to get a bit more knitting time than I did while we were on holiday. But anyway, I'll talk about that later. <laughs> um, so here they are. If I show you, I've got 
nearly finished. I mean, you can see how close I am to finishing the second sock. Um, but this is the Union Square Socks by um, Knitting Expat, and it's part of her New York Sock Club pattern club. It's the New York Sock Club, which is a pattern club for socks. Um, I've talked about this before. Um, it's seven patterns released throughout the year from March to September. Um, and this is pattern number three. And um, this one was released at the beginning of May. So the June pattern is out. I still have no sock blockers. So I shall put this on my arm and then hopefully you should be able to see the pattern. It is a lovely eyelet, there we go, a lovely eyelet pattern. And I'm so pleased with these. I've really, really enjoyed knitting them. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There we go. Really, really enjoyed knitting these. Um, and I love this pattern. I would knit this again. I really would. Um, and in fact, I've done, I can't remember which way round I've done, whether I've done the left leaning or the right leaning, and I'm not quite sure how I tell. <laughs> um, but the pattern comes with three different ways of knitting it. You can do right leaning eyelets, left leaning eyelets, or you can alternate between a right and a left as you go down the sock. I stuck with one of them. I was planning on knitting the second stock in the opposite. So I, if I did this one in right leaning, I was planning on knitting this one in left leaning, but then I got started it and I forgot. So they're both the same, which is fine. Um, but I'm definitely, I'd definitely knit this pattern again. I've really, really enjoyed it. Um, and I've also really enjoyed this yarn. Um, so the yarn for this is um, West Yorkshire Spinners. Have I got? Yes, I have. It's a bit crumpled, sorry. Um, West Yorkshire Spinners in the Signature 4 ply. Um, and it's part of their um, cocktail collection. Um, I'm not quite sure what the colour number is, but it's Sherbet Fizz. And there's the numbers. I think it must be colour 6. Um and it's sherbet fizz and it's gorgeous I absolutely love it when I first started knitting with this there's the ball it's getting a bit loose now but when I first started knitting with this and I got sort of if I show you the back of the thing I got sort of into the body of the sock I thought oh this is really pastely and I'm not sure if I was enjoying it once I added the heel in and I've just gone for a grey drops fable for the heel um, I've really enjoyed it. I think the heel just seems to somehow tone it down. I don't even know how to explain it. Um, but with the heel and the toe in the grey, I think it, it just really works. Um, so I am really, really enjoying it. And knitting with stripes really does make it um, go a lot quicker. Now, talking of stripes, I cast these on before the summer stripe vlog started, so they can't really officially count. But it's still a stripy project. I'm still knitting along in spirit um, with the cow. Um, but yeah, so these are coming along. And as I said, <clears throat> um, as I said, woo, that was really badly shown, wasn't it? I'm going to lose all these balls of wool on my lap in a minute. Um, as I said, I'm very close to um, finishing this one. Um, I'm just about to... I'm about um, three stripes away from the toe on these, I think. Um, so hopefully I'll get these finished up tonight, maybe, if I'm lucky. Um, and I'm really proud of myself for one thing in particular. Now let us see if I can show you this. I might need to move a little bit closer to the camera. I have pattern matched, I've pattern matched these. I have matched these in terms of the colour. And look how well... I've managed to match these. Even down to the heel, I've got two rows of purple before the heel, and two rows of purple after the heel. So I'm very pleased with that. <laughs> Normally I'm not worried about matching, but with something with such broad stripes as this, um, I thought they did need to match really. Um, I didn't match the purple stripy socks I, I knit, I didn't bother matching because it was quite skinny stripes and I don't think it really made a difference, but with these I did want them to match. Um, and I'm glad I made the effort because um, 
it is really, really pleasing to see how well they're matched. Um, okay, so <laughs> I've rambled on about these for a while. Um, and as I said, these are the Union Square socks, which is a um, part of the New York sock collection from Mina Phillips of um, Knitting Expat. Um, and that's it, really. Knit in West Yorkshire Spinners. The yarn at West Yorkshire Spinners is a um, it's a 75% wool, 25% nylon, and apparently 35% of that is Blue Face Leicester. Um, and I'm really enjoying it. I would knit with your West Yorkshire Spinners again. This is the first time I've knit with it. It is a half coarser wool because it's not um, it's not a merino, and it is um, and it is commercially obviously it's a commercial wool. Um, but I, I don't have any problems with knitting with commercial wool at all. Um, but yeah, it is a slightly coarser, slightly rougher wool because it's not a merino. Um, but I think it's going to wear really well. I think it's going to be quite hardy. Um, yeah, and it's been it's been very enjoyable to knit with. Um, and the drops fable I said I drops fable for the heel and toe. Um, I think it's I can't remember what colour it is, and I haven't got the label in this bag. Um, it will be linked, oh no I can't, I have got the label in the bag, I lie. Oh and I got the colour right in my head. It's colour 114, um, which is their light pearl grey, I believe. Um, but it is just a drops fable, just the standard basic drops fable, cheap and cheerful, but ideal for heels and toes and things like that. Um, and what I've always failed to tell people is what I knit on. So I knit my socks on three millimeter needles magic loop as you can see and these are um these are um, knit pro zings three millimeter knit pro zings um a lot of my needles are knit pro zings I, I really i really like the zings um i enjoy a metal needle um i'm quite a tight knitter hence the three millimeters um so a metal needle is always good because it gives me that extra slide that i wouldn't get with a wooden needle um, so I'm knitting these, these are the 56, 56 stitch version. Um, if I do a vanilla sock I usually cast on 60 stitches on 3mm needles for me and that works out fine and I'm happy with the, um, happy with the fabric and happy with it overall. Um, okay, so moving on, that is my only other work in progress that you've seen before. But I do have two new cast ons. So, let's move on to my new cast-ons. It's getting really warm in here. <laughs> um, okay, I will start with this one here. And unfortunately, you're going to look at me and you're going to go, Oh, not one of these again. This is another flax light. Um, so yeah, I know, I seem a little bit obsessed with this pattern at the moment. Um, but I knit a flax light for Jasper, which you all saw, and I just wanted to do something quick and easy for my friend, for her baby. Um, so the flax light seemed like an ideal pattern, having knit it before for, um, for, for Sam. And then I thought to myself, well, I need to knit something for Arthur, and I didn't want to do anything too different to Jasper's because we're having a lot of jealousy issues at the moment between Arthur and Jasper. Well, obviously Jasper's not being jealous because he's only seven months old. But um, Arthur is showing a lot of a lot of jealousy issues at the moment. Um, so I wanted to make sure that Jasper wasn't getting something that Arthur didn't get. Um, so I stuck with the same pattern. The next jumper I knit for them, I will do a different pattern. Um, but anyway. This is just this is Arthur's flax light, and I'm knitting this out of um, drops merino, and I believe he showed you these last time, with his slight obsession with the colour purple. Um, so here are the yarns, and these are um, drops baby merino. Come and focus on the camera, please. There we go. Sorry, the light's gone a bit. It's, it is very bright and sunny outside. I've got the blinds pulled in the hope that it won't affect it, but that grey is getting a bit. Um, so anyway, so these are the colours. Um, grey, navy and purple. Um, and as I said, these are um, Drops Merino, Drops Baby Merino mix. I can get 
Uh, there we go. So it's 100% wool, superwash wool. Um, but I think it's, um, I don't think it's all merino. I think it, there is just a mix of merino in there, but it is very, very soft. Um, and I'm using three colors. What I can't remember is which color is which. Um, so I've got color 19, color 13, and color 35. But as I said, I don't know which one. Oops, sorry, that's my phone going. It's my dad ringing me. <laughs> I'll ring him back later. <laughs> um, I can't remember which colour is which, but they are colour 13, colour 19 and colour 35. But they are all the same. They're all a drops baby merino. Um, but yeah, it's really soft um, and I'm quite enjoying working with it. I'm enjoying the stitch definition. Um, it's all a bit tangled up. Um, let me just see if I can if I put those down there. And I'm at an awkward stage to show this as well, of course, just to make life more challenging because I haven't separated for the sleeves yet. But you can get an idea, at least. Let's see if I can just pull this, stretch this around a little bit on my needles. Um, so here we go. Um, oh, sorry, here it is. Um, so as you can see, I have um, finished the rib, the neckline rib, and then I'm striping. So I'm doing four rounds of each colour, so four rounds of navy, then six rounds of the grey, and then four rounds of the purple, six rounds of grey, four rounds of navy, etc. throughout the body of this, and probably throughout the sleeves. I might have to um, change that up when I get nearer the bottom. I'm thinking towards the bottom of the jumper, I might do a couple of colour blocks with the navy and the purple. Um, depending on how much, I think I might be a little bit short of the grey for this. I'm not sure. I'll see what it happens. But I can I can do something with the colours. Um, I've got definitely got enough yarn to complete it overall. It's just whether I've got enough of the grey to carry on doing the stripes in this fashion. If I get you a close up there, you can see I'm really enjoying the stitch definition of this and the way it's knitting up. It's really really nice. And the striping over the garter stitch panel on the sleeves is working really, really nicely as well. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really enjoying this. Um, Arthur's very happy with it. He's looking forward to having it finished. He's very pleased that it's got purple in it. <laughs> um, yeah, um, so I'm afraid you're going to get to witness another flax light being knit up but um, I'm hopefully this one's a little bit different with the stripes and things as well I'm trying to make them all a little bit different but to be honest when you find a pattern you like and it works well sometimes you kind of just want to repeat it don't you you want to make something different and um, yeah but the next thing I knit for the boys I promise it will be a different a different pattern um, okay so that's my new cast on um, and as I said the wool is drops baby merino and the pattern is the flax light pullover, in case you hadn't, um, sorry, my phone, I should turn the volume off on that really, shouldn't I? And then it won't, that's, um, a friend asking if I want, Arthur and I want to come, well, Arthur, Jasper and I want to come round after nursery, um, to spend some time in the garden, in their garden in the sun, which would be lovely. Um, if I could turn the volume off on my phone, there we go. Now we won't get disturbed again. It's really bad, isn't it? Um, and now I've lost my train of thought. Flax light, baby merino, drops. First new cast on. Done. <laughs> Needles. So I am knitting this again on Knit Pro Zings. Um, the pattern calls for, um, it's a free pattern by the way. Um, I don't know if I said that. Part of their simple collection. I've, I've talked about it before. Um, the pattern calls for um, 2.75 millimeter and 3.75 millimeter needles, um, and it asks. So for this size, you're supposed to have a 16-inch circulars and 24-inch circulars, and then DPNs. Or I did my sleeves with Magic Loop um, instead of DPNs. I'm using um, three millimeter and four millimeter because, as I've as I've mentioned, I'm a tight knitter, so I always go up a needle size. 
but I didn't want to go up too much of a needle size because I didn't want to have a really loose um I didn't want it to have a really loose material um if I went up too big a needle size um but having done this one I got the size no worries with the needle size I used um, and I used the same so I did three millimeters for the ribs and four millimeters for the main body um and this blocked out very easily to the size without too much stretching or anything like that and it's not too big either um so I'm quite happy with that and again I'm using my knit pro zings um I haven't got a 24 inch circular in the right size so that's probably why it's getting a bit cramped I might need once I've done finished the once I finished the um raglan increases I might need to look at getting some bigger needles um but it's knit pro zings three millimeters and four millimeters um but yeah again I like I, I enjoy this jumper it's very very easy and I've done it this is the third time I've made it which means it's actually getting to the stage where I very I don't really even need the pattern I can just sort of get on with it I kind of know what I'm doing okay so my second you cast on um, is my duotone cow now I showed you this as huh, sorry I'm just laughing I've just found the duplo people that we couldn't find when we packed up after camping after our holiday I had no idea where these were we knew we'd bought some duplo people for Arthur to play with but could we find them anywhere and we'd in the end we just kind of assumed they were somewhere in the caravan and my in-laws would find them and bring them home I've just found them in my bag anyway <laughs> stick these down with the rest of the duplo um, so this is the duotone cow um, and I've shown you the pictures of this before um, as to what it will look like um, and this is I can't remember I keep saying I can't remember if this is a paid for pattern or not but um, this is what the finished object will look like um, and it is orange flower I can never remember yeah orange flower yarn is the, who the pattern is by and this is and this so and I've showed the yarns before as well so I'm a bit all over the place again this week aren't I um, I've showed the yarns for this before as well so this is um, Peggy Mae yarns um, come on focus there we go Peggy Mae yarns in the flying Ford Anglia colorway which was part of her um, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets yarn box um, and it's just this gorgeous sort of blue with um, some slight it's really hard to describe but blue with sort of slightly sort of more mauvey sections in it I, you can just see there and also some slightly it's, it's very tonal with sort of these mauvey bits in it as well um, and I'm pairing that with um, this yarn um, this is a come on, focus there we go this is a knit picks base um, and then I dyed it so it's knit picks bear which is a knit picks swish DK bear yarn um, and then I kettle dyed this um, myself um, a while ago this was one of my first or second dyeing attempts um, but when I saw these two together I thought to myself oh that will be perfect for this that will work really really well and it is it's a lot subtler of a stripe um, let's go back to the yarns because I've forgotten to say um, so both these yarns are a 100% um, merino um, 100% superwash merino um, and that's the label for the I've got it a bit squished around they're the Peggy Mae yarns a label if it would focus there we go um, yeah it's a lot subtler of a stripe than the picture but here we go um, this is where I'm at with it so you start with a provisional cast on which is what the greeny yellowy bit down the bottom is um, and then you just knit in a big tube see if I can get this to show up nicely here we go um, but this is how it is striping up it's a lot subtler because obviously there are areas of the colours matching 
Um, and within the variegated stripe, there are much paler areas as well. But I'm generally really happy with it. Um, you can see it's yeah a really subtle stripe. I'm really looking forward to um, when the swipe stripes when the stripe. Let's see if I can say that. I'm really looking forward to when the stripes swap. Um, so you knit half the cowl um, with in this this stripe, and then the second half will swap. So the larger stripe will be the variegated colour and the narrower stripe will be the blue um, colour. So I'm really looking forward to when they swap. I think, I think it will give a nice effect um, and it will be obviously slightly less subtle then because you'll have more of the variegation, um, whereas at the moment you're only getting two rows of variegation. Um, but I'm really enjoying it and I think it's going to be really nice. Right, sorry, just edit out um, a small coughing fit. <laughs> um, what was I saying about this? Yeah, so I've got about um, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I think I've got about three more um, of these stripes, and then I'm supposed to swap. Uh, what I might do though is just measure it to give me an idea of how I'm doing gauge wise because I don't want it to come out too small. Um, I'm using. Um, <laughs> of course I'm using Knit Pro Symphonies um, and of course the size rubs off Knit Pro Symphonies um, I think I'm using 5mm that's not a Knit Pro Symphony packet okay um, I think I'm using 5mm needles and the pattern calls for 4.5mm um, or 5mm um, so I did go for the 5mm it says to choose a needle one or two sizes larger than you typically would um, so yeah but we'll see um, I'm liking the fabric it's going to be lovely and warm it's, it's not too dense um, but yeah so that is my duotone, duotone cowl and these, this one and obviously the flax light for Arthur as well these ones are um, part my official my official knits for the summer stripe along um along with i'm sure some other things that i will start knitting throughout the summer um but yeah so as i said that's my duotone cowl which is by orange flower yarns and as usual all the details will be linked down below if you're interested in it okay so that is all my um current knitting at the moment um I need to have a little look and a little think because I really want to cast on a new shawl um, but I've been struggling to decide what I want to do I mean part of me wants to do a single skein shawl because I've got a couple of nice um, single a nice single skeins of yarn in stash that I think would look nice in a shawl but I haven't quite been able to decide which pattern I want to do yet um, so I need, to, yeah, I need to have a look I really want to cast on a new shawl but I'm not sure what. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Any ideas? Let me know. Um, okay, so moving on, I have got a tiny bit of yarny goodness to show you today. <clears throat> um, okay, now this one again, this comes with a spoiler warning. <laughs> I do like my spoiler warning. Um, so this is... Um, Peggy May Yarns, <laughs> um, and this is one of her yarn boxes. So I, I've had before the Harry Potter bo yarn boxes that she's been doing, um, and I've shown you the Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone and the Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, which is what I'm using in my dual tone cowl. Sorry, duo tone cowl. Um, and this is the Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban yarn box. Now I only received this. I think it got delivered on. Friday, today's Wednesday, it got delivered on Friday, we weren't here, so I only got this on Monday because I had to go and pick it up from the post office, um, but it's been less than a week since, um, so if anybody watching this has ordered it and doesn't want to be spoiled, doesn't want to see it, then I will put in my spoiler warning and um, don't watch my yarny goodness section this week. <laughs> Okay, so as I said, 
Peggy Mae Yarns, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban yarn box. And the yarn, if I show you her label first, um, I like these labels, um, really simple but very pretty. Um, the yarn is called Sirius Black and it is a seventh, the, well the option I went for is a 75-25 merino nylon um, and it's 100 grams for 400 meters in a four ply weight and this is the yarn here it is um, so come and focus camera here we go so it is a um, a speckled skein kind of variegatedy speckledy um, with the sort of natural base and then there are pops of um, black and brown in there but there are also some lovely pops of um, sort of hot pink and um, sort of more tanny kind of colours um, and some lovely sort of sort of speckled speckled bits um, I'm going to open this up um, some sort of lovely sort of speckly bits in there as well and one of the things that I love about ordering these kind of yarn boxes is that you never know what's going to come at all and I've said I've, I've spoken before that I like that element of surprise. So this is not something I would ever have picked. Um, a sort of a more natural base, but with blacks and browns and things in it. It's not something I would ever have actually picked for myself, but I really like it. And I think it, you know, with the with the bits of hot pink in there as well, and you know, all the different colours in the speckles. Um, I mean, there's a really good bit now. I've just rescanned that up. It, you can see all these different sort of um, different colours and things in there and it's gorgeous and I can see how she's gone for Sirius Black with it and I yep yeah, I can completely see Sirius Black in this skein of yarn it, it yeah I love it um, but as I said yeah it's not something that I would normally pick and I really like that about ordering these yarn boxes because I think sometimes I end up gravitating towards the same colours all the time um, and you don't always want to do that and you know it's nice to have some different colours in in your stash some different things um, and I think this would go really nicely as part of a um, as part of a shawl um, as like part of a, a multicoloured shawl um, <clears throat> so yeah I'm very pleased with it so that is my only yarny goodness this week um, and obviously I ordered this quite a while ago um, but yeah Peggy Mae Yarns, Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban yarn box. Um, I have also ordered the Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire one, um, which I think will be arriving sometime in July. Um, but yeah, I've really, enjoy, I've really enjoyed these um, and the element of surprise that's involved in them. Um, okay, so I don't have any more yarny goodness. Um, in that case, that is the end of my knitting content and oh I've just dropped that on the floor and my yarny content um so I will move on to um behind the scenes um it feels like a bit of a shorter episode this week and it is um I feel like I haven't had a lot of knitting to show um so I think a lot of that is because we've been on holiday um so I haven't had the same sort of evening knitting time as I would have done normally um and things have been a little bit chaotic in the last few weeks. Um, I'm glad that things seem to be getting back to normal this week. So I had a week with Tom away in New York and then it was half term for a week. So obviously I had both boys all week and then we went on holiday. Um, so it just feels like I've had three weeks without our normal routine and without our normal activities. Um, and it's really impacted on Arthur. Arthur his behaviour has been very challenging um, recently. A lot of it is jealousy, I think, with Jasper. He seems to really have, that, that kind of jealousy that I was expecting early on seems to really have come now. Um, we've had quite a few occasions where he's pushed Jasper over um, or hit him with something. And Arthur's not, he's never been a, 
he's never been an aggressive child or I don't quite know how to say it without it sounding like it's a really negative thing but he's never been a, a, a sort of a violent aggressive child um he's always been quite laid back and quite calm um but just in the last few weeks he he's definitely been a little bit more aggressive towards Arthur uh, towards Jasper um so it's something we're having to work on at the moment um which is fun and challenging the joys of parenting um but yeah so I'm hoping that now that all of that's behind us things will settle down slightly and he'll get back into his routine of nursery and things and fingers crossed that'll help the behavior too um but yeah so in terms of our behind the scenes and what we've been up to we have been on holiday um we went to the Isle of Wight um we went camping um for anyone not in the UK the Isle of Wight is the little island literally um at the bottom of the UK um if you look at a map of the UK the very south coast not the Cornwall bit that goes off to the side but the very south coast you've got this little island and that is the Isle of Wight um and it, it's a beautiful island lots of countryside really really pleasant it it's only about it's less than an hour's drive from edge to edge um so you can see a lot of it um while you're there for a week um, and we went camping um our in-laws my in-laws came as well um and they had their caravan um and we camped which was okay we had one horrendous night where it was so stormy um the boys slept through it all but we were up in the night multiple times repegging our tent out so that it didn't blow away it was that stormy um at one point i was saying i was thinking you know that it might come a stage where we actually have to just go and sleep in the car <laughs> um but it didn't come and we stayed dry the tent didn't leak it just kept threatening to blow down <laughs> But we had lots of fun, um, we did lots of family activities, um, we went to a place called Tapnell Farm, um, which Arthur loved, and it was really good actually for kids his age, um, they had so much to do, and because it wasn't half term the week we went, everything was quite quiet, um, so he had free reign of all the activities and all the different things. Um, it was really well thought out for younger kids as well as older kids, because they had some things like go-karting which normally Jack Arthur wouldn't be able to do because he would still be too small. But they had special ones where they had seats on the back so the parent could cycle the go-kart and the kid could sit on the back. And um, so he could still be involved and he could still do it, um, which was really, really nice for him. Um, we also went to um, Osborne House, um, which is an English heritage property on the Isle of Wight. And Osborne House is the... Um, so it was built by Queen Victoria um, and it was her and Prince Albert's sort of holiday home kind of thing um, but it was lovely you get a lot of history about Queen Victoria um, turns out she was a knitter <laughs> um, I've got a very bad photograph of a, of a painting um, which shows Queen Victoria um, sitting and knitting um, I will put it in actually because um, I'm sure people enjoy seeing that um, and yeah it just showed a lot of history to do with her and her family and the property um, but you could walk from there down to the beach um, and yeah it was very pleasant Arthur enjoyed it he did very well around the house we went around the house which we haven't done a house in a while we usually when we go to places and um, like National Trust properties and things we tend to just do the gardens um, because Arthur got once Arthur got to the stage where he was a bit bored in the house and you couldn't really sort of strap him into a sling or anything they became a bit harder harder work but we wanted to try it because obviously we're not going to go back to the Osborne house for a long long time if we do go back um so we didn't want to miss out on it and actually he did very very well um we kept him going with you know trying to get him to spot things how many horses can you see in this room and um all that kind of thing um, but he did he did do very well and he was very very well behaved around the house um but he thoroughly enjoyed being able to walk down to the beach and they had like a little play area um in one aspect as well which he he was able to do and able to enjoy as well um so yeah we did quite a lot of things um one of my favorite things was um black gang chine um i don't know if anyone's been to the isle of wight and has been to black gang chine black gang chine is kind of it's kind of an amusement park 
but it's very hard to describe. It's been there for a long, long time. Um, they are updating it and there are new things coming in and things like that, but they've got very few rides. It's very much um, lots of different imagination lands, they call it. So they've got a fairy land, a cowboy land, a pirate land, and they've got a, they've got an amazing bit with dinosaurs, animatronic dinosaurs, and you can walk through um, through all these animatronic dinosaurs. Arthur found that a bit scary, um, but I think he enjoyed it. He was just very, very nervous of them. Um, and then they've got um, a fantastic bit where they may created like a a real snakes and ladders game. Um, so you've got all these steps and things to climb and then you have to spin a little thing and it tells you whether you have to go down the, sl the slide for the snake um, or up the ladder. I think in America they call snakes and ladders it shoots and ladders, the, the board game. Um, <clears throat> and he really enjoyed that and these slides were massive um, but he absolutely loved that. That was really really good fun. Um, but yeah it's really kitschy and there's lots of sort of fiberglass figures and, and things like that. I'll try and put in a few pictures at the end of, sort of the things we got up to when we were on holiday as well. So you can kind of see some of Black Gang Chine. And I would recommend it because it is, it's spectacular for kids, but it is so amusing for a grown up as well. There's so many weird and wonderful and crazy little bits and pieces. Um, but no, we had a really, really good holiday. Um, it was enjoyable. It was tiring. There were a lot of early mornings, as you can imagine. Um, with the boys and trying to control a three-year-old in a tent or a caravan when it was raining was quite challenging um, but generally we weren't at the campsite the whole time we went out we did things we did activities and, and things like that um, so no it was good fun although I have to say I'm glad to be home and getting back into normality um, anyway that's all we've kind of been up to so I will leave it there I um, as usual I will put some pictures in at the end, um, a little slideshow so you can see some photos of our holiday um, and things like that. Um, but yeah, I will leave it there. Um, it seems, as I said, a little bit of a shorter episode this week. Um, I hope that's okay. Hopefully I will have some extra knitting content for you in two weeks time. Um, I've got some plans to cast on a couple of new things and I'm, so, I'm very close to finishing um, my socks as well. Um, so yeah look forward to seeing some new things next time on podcast um okay so yeah come along as i said before and check out the summer stripe along group um there are lots of prizes um so get yourself knitting some stripey stuff um anything that was cast on after the first of june is eligible so come along and check that out um and yeah if you've enjoyed what you've seen today um, and you haven't done so yet then please hit the subscribe please hit the subscribe button down below um, and um, give the video a thumbs up as well because um, that just gets it noticed a little bit more um, okay so I will leave you there um, I will be back in two weeks time um, with some more knitting content for you um, and in the meantime enjoy your knitting <laughs> bye